At the end of World War II, Eleanor Roosevelt pioneered the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And out of that grew two major conventions, the Convention on Civil and Political Rights and the Convention on Economic, uh, Social, and Cultural Rights. These three things together form what is known as the International Bill of Rights. You are about to participate in the trial of the 2004 French law that prohibits students in public schools from wearing signs that overtly manifest religious affiliation. We really have to go back to the beginning of this argument, which is 1989. This law was all about targeting those girls. What we're talking about here are some classrooms in France where most of the pupils will in fact be Muslim. So the issue is not just one between Islam and the West, as perhaps the other side likes to frame this issue, but the debate among Muslims themselves, many of whom reject the notion that the headscarf is in any way prescribed uh, by the religion Islam. In the end, what is happening, and it happens consistently around the world, is the bodies of girls and women become a battlefield for ideology. And the point is, no woman or girl's body should be a battlefield where what you wear or don't wear becomes a question for legislation and you are punished, whether the punishment is putting at risk your right to education or the punishment is violence from your family and community. Islamic organizations in France all favor this law because it's a law that guarantees equality between men and women. And it's a law that guarantees women free circulation, especially in school, where they no longer face discrimination. World on Trial is a program of trials to determine whether nations around the world, nations that have ratified major human rights conventions, have complied with the conventions that they have ratified. We have gathered the best legal talent in the world, the best judges, the best attorneys, the best witnesses, to put countries on trial to measure the extent to which they have or have not complied with international human rights law. After 15 years of discussion, it occurred to us it was time to say stop. Girls, children, kids have come to us saying, protect us. We want to be free. Free to wear skirts, free to wear pants. If we don't want to wear a scarf, we don't want to wear a scarf. Protect us. We're not asking for a special exception. We're simply saying, do not single out Muslim women girls who have no power themselves, if the law says everyone should be protected, and this law infringes upon the protection of those who need it the most. We're convening juries around the world. There are some 20 universities and law schools participating in this project. They will all see the very same trial and look at the common standard, the treaties by which we're measuring our progress. The French doctrine of laïcité or secularism, it's a really strong doctrine. I don't think that they brought in the law to discriminate, but I think they brought in the law because it was necessary. Everyone is happy with the law in France. It's only the world that is not happy with it. If one person doesn't like this idea, it's a discrimination. If we are talking here the, about the human rights. The only thing that I was hearing from the defense is a woman without scarf on her head is more free than a woman with a scarf on her head. Yeah. And, and this is a mistaken conception. Yes, exactly. It's the conflict between freedom of religion and freedom from religion. Even if they do leave the school, they will still have to wear that religious attire anyway. But maybe that gives them a sense of liberty that no other sphere will give them. If these human rights laws are going to work as we would hope that they would work, uh, as so many have worked so hard to make them work, they have to be brought in the form of education and information to the entire world community.